Hi, my name is Richard Haller and I'm here today to talk to you about the Southwest. This is a region of the, of the country that we'll be talking about and we'll be talking about a little bit about the geography, the history, and the songs of this region. Now, the first thing you should know probably is that the Southwest is not an exact term. We could argue about what states make it up. Uh, for example, we're going to be talking about Texas, but somebody else might say, wait a minute, wasn't Texas on the side of the Confederacy? That's a southern state. And they would have an argument. For our purposes, though, we're going to be talking about four states, Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Arizona. And you might say, four states? That's a region? The Northeast has 11 states in it. But yes, that's what we're talking about. And as you might guess, these states are huge. Because they're so large, you're going to see quite a bit of variation as far as what it's like there. Someday perhaps you'll travel across the state of Texas and you'll see a place, there are some hills, the same is true of Oklahoma, but for the most part it is extremely flat. And when you're driving across the state, the road will stretch out in front of you like a, like a yardstick on a table, straight as can be, all the way to the horizon. And you'll drive all day long, very flat, big dome of sky up ahead, and by the end of the day, you're still in Texas. Now, because it's such a large region, not every place is like that. All, the whole region is pretty dry except for the mountains. Up in New Mexico, there are mountains, tall mountains, ones where there's snow, uh, even in the summertime. When we get into Arizona, we get into a very dry place, desert. And uh, in the southern part of Arizona, where the great saguaro cactus grow, those cactus that look like uh, a person, a great big person, uh, you're going to have temperatures that approach 120 degrees Fahrenheit in the summertime. Well, that's a little bit about the geography of this place. We're going to begin with a song, and this song comes from the state of Texas. It's an old, old song, and it's some, about some boys who are talking about uh, going hunting. And this song is meant to be funny, but the kind of humor is kind of a rough frontier humor. Uh, you may or may not find it funny yourself. We'll see. Let's go a hunting, says Risky Rob. Let's go a hunting, says Robin the Bob. Let's go a hunting, says Donald Joe. Let's go a hunting, says Billy Barlow. What shall we hunt for, says Risky Rob? What shall we hunt for, says Robin the Bob? What shall we hunt for, says Daniel to Joe? Why hunt for a rat, says Billy Barlow? How shall we catch him, says Risky Rob? How shall we catch him, says Robin the Bob? How shall we catch him, says Daniel to Joe? I borrow guns, says Billy Barlow. How shall we haul him, says Risky Rob? How shall we haul him, says Robin the Bob? How shall we haul him, says Daniel to Joe? I borrow a wagon, says Billy Barlow. How shall we divide him, says Risky Rob? How shall we divide him, says Robin the Bob? How shall we divide him, says Daniel to Joe? I borrow a knife, says Billy Barlow. I'll take shoulders, says Risky Rob. 
I'll take sides, says Robin the Bob. I'll take hands, says Danny to Chode. Tailbone mine, says Billy Barlow. How shall we cook him, says Riskera? How shall we cook him, says Robin the Bob. How shall we cook him, says Danny to Chode. While over a fire, says Billy Barlow. I'll boil shoulders, says Riskera. I'll fry sides, says Robin the Bob. I'll bake ham, says Danny to Joe. Tailbone raw, says Billy Barlow. Now this is a folk song, and like all folk songs, it's probably been changed over time. And uh, when I was growing up, a friend of mine had an idea that this song didn't really end appropriately. We wanted to know what happens after they have this meal. So he made up uh, this final verse. I feel sick, says Riskera. I got a bellyache, says Robin the Bob. Oh, says Daniel to Joe. I feel fine, says Billy Barlow. South West is generally a pretty dry place. But it does have rivers, and those rivers would be especially delightful to the people who live there. Here's a picture of a river. This river is called the Rio Grande, and like many places in the southwest, it has a Spanish name. Rio, Rio Grande in Spanish would be pronounced Rio Grande. And it means big river. Now, does this look like a big river to you? It looks like a river you could just wade across. Nothing like the Hudson River or the Mississippi River or the Connecticut River for that matter. No, but nonetheless it would be a very valuable place. Remember this is a dry climate, so this is a source of water. It would also be a wonderful place to go on those hot summer days when the, uh, the, day, the day is so hot out in the sun, the river would be ice cold because it's coming from melted snow up in the mountains. And because of the extra moisture, trees could be growing there. And the trees and the water could attract wildlife and singing birds. It would be a wonderful place. And so we're going to do a song now that uh, celebrates the rivers of the Southwest. It's called Down by the Brazos. And uh, Brazos is another example of one of these Spanish words. Uh, Brazos means arm. So the Brazos River is one that has a kind of an elbow in it, a turn. Here's our song. We crossed the broad pesos, we forded the Nunez. We swam the Guadalupe, we forded the Brazos. Red River runs rusty, the Wichita clear. But down by the Brazos I courted my dear. La 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 dee de give me your hand. La 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 dee de give me your hand. La 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 dee de give me your hand. There 
There's many a river that waters the land. She told me she loved me, she called me her dandy. The trinet is muddy, the grass is quick sandy. She told me she loved me, she called me her own. Down by the brasses she left me alone La 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 he the day give me her hand La 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 he the day give me her hand La 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 he the day give me her hand There's many a river that waters the land. The fair Angelina runs glossy and gliding. The crooked Colorado runs weaving and winding the broad San Antonio courses the plain. But I never will walk by the brazos again. La la la, he did give me your hand. La la la, he did give me your hand. La la la, he did give me your hand. There's many. A river that waters the land. You know, these uh, American songs belong to each and every one of us. And if you'd like to sing along, that'd be great. Let's try it together. La la la, lee la, give me your hand. La la la, lee la, give me your hand. La la la, he the day give me your hand. There's many a river that borders the land. Now, an interesting question you might think about is we have some anonymous person wrote this song, beautiful tune, but somehow. This person knew about all these different rivers in Texas. Why? Well, there's an answer to that. First of all, if you were traveling from southern Texas north, you would cross every one of the rivers that are mentioned in the song. You see, up in the Rocky Mountains, in New Mexico and Colorado, that's where the rivers are born. They come from the melting snow way up in the mountains. And so from the mountains, they run southwest, or southeast rather, into the Gulf of Mexico. If you were traveling north, you would cross every one of them. But why would you travel north? Why would you want to do that? Well, uh, there is an answer to that question, and it has to do with what are called cattle drives. You see, back in those days, we're talking about the 19th century now, there were cattle, huge herds of wild cattle that had been brought over by the Spanish when this was a part of their country. And these, some of the animals had gotten loose and they multiplied out on the prairie, so there they were herds of hundreds and thousands of these longhorn cattle. Now, a cow like that was worth perhaps $10 in Texas, but in Chicago, the same animal would be worth $40. So, if you could find a way to get your cattle to a railroad station so they could be shipped by rail to a Chicago, you, could, you had the opportunity to make quite a bit of money. And that's what people began to do. In the springtime, they would gather the uh, cattle from the range. Now, how did they know which ones belonged to them? You know, there were no fences. These cows were just out. Well, the answer is they would be branded. 
there would be a mark burned in their hide that uh, would indicate who owned them. So they would go out on the range, they would hunt any cattle that had their brand. If they found any that didn't have a brand or any calves, they would brand them right there. Then they would gather those together, they'd get horses, perhaps a hundred horses, and they would start moving these large herds of cattle north. This was the job of the cowboys. And it was a hot, dusty job, as you can see from this picture. Here they are, uh, rounding up the cattle, getting ready to drive them north. It could only go about 20 miles a day. And uh, there would be a chuck wagon that accompanied them with a cook. And that person would go ahead 20 miles or so and find a place where there was water and where there was grass for the animals to eat. You'd also have the bed rolls in there. Accompanying him also would be what was called a wrangler, somebody not much older than you who was in charge of taking care of the horses. So, our next song is one that uh, kind of shows the way they would be uh, moving these cattle because the chorus is whoopee tie i o get along little dogies. That whoopee tie i o that's the kind of whooping and hollering they would do to keep the cattle moving. The dogies, well, dogies were uh, calves that for one reason or another no longer had a mother. They were orphan uh, cows, if you wish. And uh, these dogies were kind of a problem to the cowboys. The, the other calves would just follow along with their mother, but these dogies would be running around and getting in all kinds of trouble. So that's what the, uh, the reference to dogies is. Uh, here's our, our song. and. Uh, Again, if you'd like to sing along, you're welcome to do so. <clears throat> As I was out riding one morning for pleasure, spied a cow puncher riding along. His hat was thrown back and his spurs were jingling. As he approached me, he was singing this song. Whoop tie hi ho get along, little doggies. Yo, misfortune ain't none of my home. Whoop tie hi ho get along, little doggies. You do it why ho and we'll be your new home. Well, it's early in the springtime, we round up them doggies. We rope them and brand them and bob off their tails. Gather the horses, load up the chuck wagon, turn all those doggies out on the south trail. Whoop a tie, hi ho, get along, little doggies. Your misfortune ain't none of my home. Whoop a tie, hi ho, get along, little doggies. You do that, why ho, and we'll be your new home. Now some boys they go up the trail for pleasure But that's where they get it most terribly wrong For they've no idea of the troubles they give us As we go riding them doggies along Whoop tie hi ho get along little doggies Your misfortune ain't done my home Whoop tie hi ho Get along, little doggies. You know that why home will be your new home. Now the cowboy era really only lasted about 20 or 30 years. This time when the great cattle drives were going on up to uh, places like Kansas, cities like Kansas City, Abilene, where the railroad was. See what happened though was over time the railroads started expanding so you no longer had to make these huge hundreds and hundreds of mile drives to get your cattle to market. Uh, plus also you had the invention of barbed wire and so more and more the plain was being fenced off and you couldn't just drive your cattle through somebody else's land. So this era lasted maybe 1860 to 1890 and yet, well, even while it was going on, it captured people's imagination. There were dime novels that were produced filled with cowboy stories, stories of cowboys and outlaws and gunfights and all the rest of it.
when movies were invented. A lot of those early movies were westerns as well. And the same thing happened when television came along. Many of the early television shows were also all about cowboys. So, how did Hollywood show cowboys? Well, here's a picture, you can see. We've got a bunch of television and movie cowboys. First thing you'll notice, perhaps, is that they are dressed rather nicely. In fact, it looks like their clothes just came from the dry cleaner. You'll also notice they are heavily armed. Every one of them's got a six-shooter in his hand. And the last thing, you might not notice this, but it's a fact, all of them are light-skinned. Now, let's take a look at some real cowboys. The real cowboys are a scruffier looking lot. Their clothing is nowhere near as nicely pressed. Many of them are, are wearing what are called chaps, made out of uh, either sheepskin or leather, and those are intended to protect their legs when they're riding along the prairie because many of the plants that grow in the southwest have thorns that could tear your clothing or even your flesh. Another thing you'll notice about these cowboys is that where are the pistols? Well, if you look carefully, you'll see one fellow does have a six-shooter tucked into his waistband, but most of them are unarmed. In fact, you didn't have to own a pistol to be a cowboy. All you really needed was the clothing on your back and one item, a saddle. You didn't even have to own a horse. Those would be uh, provided. Now, our next song is uh, kind of a different sounding song than the one we just did, because that song had the sound, that whoopee tie i -O, where they were trying to keep the cattle moving. In this song, they're trying to do the opposite. They're trying to calm them down. As the cowboys are riding what they were called night watch at night. They'd be riding around and trying to soothe those animals, perhaps sing it to them. Maybe play a small instrument, like a harmonica or a fiddle. And uh, what they're trying to do is prevent a stampede. A stampede was a very dangerous thing. You see, cattle are herd animals. And so if something startled them, a snap of a twig, some distant thunder, one of them starts running, they're all going to start running. And what would happen then was the cowboys would jump out of their bedrolls, hop into the saddle, and start riding like crazy, trying to turn the cattle. Now this would be in pitch black. So they try to get the cattle to run in a circle so that they get tired out and finally stop. While they're riding the night watch, the cattle might, the, the cowboys might be singing a song like this one to keep the cattle calm. And they might keep singing the same song over and over, all night long. Eyes like the morning star Cheeks like the rose Laura was a pretty girl God Almighty knows Weep all you little rains, wail winds wail. All along, along, along the Colorado Trail. Right all the stormy night. All the day, keep the herds rolling, rolling on their way. Weep all you little rains, wail winds wail. Ride 
that all the stormy night Dark is the sky Wish I'd stayed in Hadley Nice and warm and dry Weep all you little rain Well, winds wail Of a long, a long, a long The Colorado Trail Eyes like the morning star Cheeks like the rose Laura was a pretty girl God Almighty knows Weep all you little rains Wail winds wail All along, along It's a pretty song, isn't it? The amazing thing is that here you have this beautiful melody and words that are really poetry written or this person may not have been able to write but made up by a cowboy long, long ago and passed down to us today. In the 1930s, <clears throat> there was a train went from New Orleans, Louisiana to Houston, Texas. And uh, right around midnight, it passed a jail, a penitentiary called Sugarland State Penitentiary. And the prisoners there had a legend. And the legend was that if the light of that train should shine on you, you would go free the next morning. Now, in 1933, John and Alan Lomax were traveling through uh, this part of the country looking for songs to record, and they discovered this man. His name was Huddy Ledbetter. In the prison, he was known as Leadbelly because he was so tough. And uh, they recorded him and eventually appealed to the governor and he was able to get a pardon and go free, travel to the Northeast, and perform. This is one of his most famous songs, The Midnight Special. Where well, you wake up in the morning, you hear the ding-dong ring. Go marching to the table, See the same old thing, it's all on one table. Knife, a fork, and a pan. Say anything about it, and you're in trouble where the man had the midnight special. Shine a light on me, there's the midnight special. Shine a heavy love light on me If you ever go to Houston Boy, you'd better walk right You better not stagger And you better not fight Chef Benson will arrest you they carry you down Jury finds you guilty. You're paying attention, red bound, has a midnight special. Shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine a heavy love light on me. Not a come is rosy. How in the world do you know? 
told her by her apron and by the dress that she wore, umbrella on her shoulder, a piece of paper in her hand. She'd march it to the captain. She says, I want my man at the midnight special. Shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine a heavy love night on me. Now one of these mornings, and it won't be long, he'll call my name, but I'll be gone, I'll be done my grieving. Whooping, hollering, and crying. Be done my studying. About my great long time. Let a midnight special shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine a heavy loving light on me. Let the midnight special. Shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine a heavy love light on me. Our final song comes from a period of time known as the Dust Bowl, about 1930 to 1936. The Dust Bowl was a area that was very large, covering parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, a big area, hundreds of miles across. And what happened was this. In the 1920s, crop prices were good. There was more rainfall than usual. People started planting in places where they hadn't planted before because there wasn't enough rain. Then 1930 comes it's a period of drought when there's less rain than usual. So what happens is the crops come up, there's not enough rain. The plants die. And what had formerly been grassland, with lots of roots to hold the soil together, is now just dry, open fields. And when the winds came, that dust and dirt was picked up into huge clouds like this one. This photograph was taken in the middle of the day, and yet under the cloud it's as dark as night. And that cloud is not rainwater, it's a cloud of dust and dirt. And if you've ever walked across a parking lot and a wind came up and blew some that kind of material in your face, you know it's not a pleasant feeling at all. Not only that, but the next morning you might wake up, look out your window and see a scene like this. Because when the winds died, all that dust and dirt came out of the sky and it might cover wagons, gardens, fields. And at that point, your family might decide, this is hopeless. We can't make a living here. We've got to leave. And in fact, hundreds of thousands of people in this area that made that decision to try to find a better life somewhere else. One of them was Woody Guthrie who wrote this song, So Long It's Been Good to Know You, and uh, that'll be the last song that we'll be doing today. I've sung this song, but I'll sing it again Of the place that I lived on the wild windy plain In the month of April in the county called Gray Here's what all of the people there say So long, it's been good to know him So long, it's been good to know him 
so long it's been good to know you this dusty old dust it's getting my home and I gotta be drifting along a dust storm hit and it hit like thunder it covered us over and it dusted us under it blocked out the traffic Blocked out the sun, straight for home all the people did run So long, it's been good to know him So long, it's been good to know him So long, it's been good to know you This dusty old dust, it's getting my home And I gotta be drifting along Two sweethearts sat in the dark and sparked They hugged and they kissed in that dusty old dark They sighed and cried and hugged and kissed But instead of marriage they talked like this Honey, so long, it's been good to know him So long, it's been good to know him So long, it's been to know you, this dusty old dust, it's getting my home, and I gotta be drifting along. Then the telephone rang, it had jumped off the wall, that was the preacher, he was making his call, he says, kind friends, this may be the end. Got your last chance for salvation from sin Well, the church it was jammed And the church it was packed But that dusty old dust storm Blowed up so black That the preacher could not Read a word of his text So he folded his specs He took a collection Said so long It's been good to know him So long It's been good to know him so long it's been good to know you this dusty old dust it's getting my home and I gotta be drifting along well that's our final song for today so long it's been good to know you but actually I'll be back one more time to do songs of the far west. So I'll see you then.